In 2024, U.S. astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams were stuck on the ISS after Boeing's Starliner developed serious thruster and helium leak problems. They stayed nine months there instead of eight days as scheduled originally. In 2025, China's Shenzhou 20 incident tells a different story. Hi everyone, welcome back to Difference Frames the World, a channel that offers a unique perspective on global events. We analyze big international moves in straightforward words and upload videos daily. Today, Clara would like to take you on a journey through Beijing's exploration of outer space. China's space program has been quietly advancing in recent years, transitioning from single missions to full-fledged station operations and planning for lunar landings as well as Mars exploration. A recent high-drama incident involving the Shenzhou, 20 mission highlights both China's progress and the new risks that lie ahead. On November 14, 2025, three Chinese astronauts made a successful return to Earth following a difficult decision to abandon their original return vessel. This critical choice was prompted by severe damage sustained from orbiting debris while they were completing their mission aboard the Chinese space station. Despite the challenges they faced, the astronauts showcased extraordinary resilience and skill, ultimately utilizing an alternate spacecraft to safely navigate their descent through the atmosphere and land in a designated recovery area. Their successful return marked a significant achievement for China's space program, highlighting the need for ongoing attention to the safety risks posed by space debris. Let's use this incident as a lens through which to explore the trajectory of China's human spaceflight program, its origins, its stationary ambitions, the milestones achieved so far, the unexpected hiccup with Shenzhou 20, and what's next for China in space. China's human spaceflight program, managed by the China Man Space Agency, CMSA, began in 1992. That's when the government decided to focus on developing the technology and skills needed to send people into space. Its first crewed mission took place in 2003 with the Shenzhou 5 flight, during which Yang Liwei became the first Chinese astronaut to orbit the Earth. From those early days, China sought to build experience in crewed launches, docking, extravehicular activities, and eventually a permanently crewed space station. Two Pathfinder space labs under the Tiangong name paved the way. Tiangong, one launched in 2011 and hosted two crewed missions in 2012 and 2013. Its successor, Tiangong-2, launched in 2016, helping develop concepts of longer-duration stays and orbital maintenance. With those successes behind it, China set its sights on establishing a full-scale space station. The current Chinese orbital outpost, referred to as the Tiangong Space Station, which means Heavenly Palace in English, is a three-module station in low Earth orbit. The core module, Tianhe, launched in April 2021, and two laboratory modules followed, Wintian and Mengtian the following year. China's space station is designed for continuous habitation. It ordinarily hosts three astronauts at a time for about six months each, and during changeovers, the number on board may reach six for handover operations. These achievements mark China's transition from occasional crewed visits to an era of sustained human presence in space, a major milestone in global space exploration. China's space exploration program has ticked off several notable milestones. Regular six-month missions aboard Tiangong, with crews rotating in and out. Deployment of younger astronauts, in fact, China has begun sending astronauts born in the 1990s into orbit, signifying a generational shift in its astronaut core. Many scientific and technical experiments are being conducted on Tiangong, including materials science, biotechnology, aerospace medicine, and the study of small mammals in orbit. Outside the station itself, China plans to launch a human mission to the moon by around 2030. China is no longer an occasional space traveler, it is becoming a sustained spacefaring power with growing ambitions. Now let us probe into a dramatic event, the Shenzhou 20 incident. In early November 2025, China faced a significant challenge that highlighted the risks associated with space travel. According to Reuters, the Shenzhou 20 crew, who had been aboard the Tiangong space station for approximately six months, were scheduled to return on November 5. However, their original return vehicle, the Shenzhou 20 spacecraft, was found to have tiny cracks in a small window of the return capsule, 
likely caused by an impact from space debris. The China Manned Space Agency determined that the capsule did not meet safety requirements for a crewed return, so the Shenzhou 20 crew returned instead in the newly arrived Shenzhou 21 spacecraft. As a result, the Shenzhou 21 crew currently aboard the Tiangong Space Station lacks a flight worthy return vessel until a replacement is sent. This situation creates a rare, stranded crew scenario for China's space program. It demonstrates that even a system that seems mature can still be vulnerable to unpredictable threats, such as space debris. The incident also highlights the operational and logistical complexities of maintaining a permanently crewed space station, which involves multiple spacecraft, overlapping missions, mission handovers, and lifeboat readiness. Currently, China is the only country to maintain its own space station independently. Other players in the space exploration arena, including Russia and the US, rely on the International Space Station, which was designed and constructed by multiple countries. It also puts China's space program under scrutiny regarding risk management, reliability, and resilience. The focus has shifted from simply asking, can we get there, to can we return safely? In recent years, space debris has become a growing threat, and the Shenzhou 20 event demonstrated the increasing problem of orbital debris. According to Reuters, the risk of impact from small fragments in orbit is rising sharply as the number of satellites, rocket stages, and collisions in low Earth orbit continues to grow. The Tiangong station is not alone, as the International Space Station also has had to maneuver to avoid debris. The incident raises concerns about international coordination regarding debris monitoring, collision avoidance, and satellite traffic management. It also highlights whether China, the US, and other major players can enhance their cooperation. While the Shenzhou 20 crew is safe, the incident serves as a reminder of the fragility of operational procedures, even during what is considered a routine mission. China's space station program is now entering a new phase, moving from simply establishing a presence to optimizing for reliability and resilience. The Shenzhou 20 event may act as a stress test, prompting the China Manned Space Agency to refine its protocols, enhance spacecraft readiness, improve rescue logistics, and develop more effective debris mitigation strategies. China is set to host foreign astronauts, with a Pakistani astronaut scheduled to travel to the Tiangong Space Station next year, according to a report from Reuters. By opening Tiangong to international partners, China expresses its intention to take a broader role in human spaceflight, possibly serving as an alternative or complement to the International Space Station. After the ISS ends its operations in 2030, other countries may need to switch to China's space station for research purposes. China's Manned Space Agency, CMSA, has announced that it is able and ready to invite foreign astronauts to its Tiangong space station. China wants to collaborate with all countries committed to the peaceful use of outer space. CMSA has already initiated a selection process for foreign astronauts, which will include language and cultural training, as Chinese is the official language there. However, the political reality is complicated. A U.S. law known as the Wolf Amendment restricts NASA from engaging in direct, bilateral cooperation with the Chinese government or its space program unless explicitly approved. This legal restriction makes it significantly more difficult for the U.S. to send NASA astronauts to Tiangong, despite China's openness to the possibility of inviting Americans. Some policy experts, including those from the Council on Foreign Relations, have proposed the idea of astronaut exchange programs where U.S. astronauts would travel to Tiangong. At the same time, Chinese taikonauts would visit the International Space Station. However, these proposals remain speculative and would require substantial political support and legal adjustments to become a reality. Although the ISS is not solely owned by the U.S., a U.S. law prevents China from accessing it, which is a good example of America's long-arm jurisdiction. We hardly believe Beijing's legislators will follow suit, prohibiting U.S. astronauts from boarding their space station. Still, it is least likely that they will beg the Americans to set foot on their heavenly palace. As China's space station operations advance, the country is increasingly focusing on lunar exploration. There is widespread discussion in Chinese state media and international commentary about the possibility of a Chinese landing on the moon by around 2030.
China is the first country to land on the back of the moon and take materials back from there. If a Chinese lands on the moon five years later, it will greatly boost China's national pride, even if they are not the first to reach there in the real world. We strongly recommend that China send a Chinese lady to the moon, as their ancestors dreamed of thousands of years ago. China's gaze is far beyond the moon. Ongoing research in small mammal biology in orbit, material science, and the effects of prolonged exposure to microgravity is contributing to China's long-term goals in space exploration. These goals include plans for lunar bases, Mars precursor missions, and deep space habitats. China's advancements in space exploration are not solely scientific, they also have significant geopolitical implications. While the U.S. focuses on the Artemis program and reaffirms its commitments to lunar exploration, China's independent space station and ambitions represent a parallel path. Analysts predict that competition and potential cooperation in space may intensify. It is worth noting that China has long turned its eyes from the moon to the Mars. If one day a Chinese individual sets foot on the crimson terrain and truly establishes a life there, it would usher in a remarkable chapter in human history.